Here we are in my uh, laundry room workshop. Um, today I'm going to show you how to revive one of these uh, Ryobi lithium ion batteries. It's a known issue with these batteries. I've heard that even brand new ones. You put them in the charger. The red flashing means it's uh, in the testing evaluation mode and you can hear it. There's a little clicking going on there. It keeps on clicking. It keeps trying to test and I've left I had three of these with this problem. Left them in here for like 20 minutes, half hour. That's all they do, they never charge. So uh, most people think when they're in the state, oh, the batteries just had it and they're throwing them away. And uh, actually what's going on is there's a, a component inside of these, a circuit board in here that uh, prevents the battery from overcharging, I guess, and uh, also from uh, draining down too far. And that's what's happening is Occasionally something goes wrong with these and the, uh, the cells drain down too far and at that point what you get is if you just test the battery a reading of generally zero volts. Well, well you can see that but nothing for voltage on there. Okay so what we need to do is first of all open it up now these they use a special um, security bit which uh, it's a tiny little Torx uh, it's a T10 I guess I get this kit at uh, Harbor Freight Tools it does a job nicely of removing these screws I'm going to do the whole process here because I want to see how long it takes and so this will uh, so show me time wise I thought it was going to be too time consuming to be worthwhile but it doesn't really take very long As a disclaimer, I should say, don't try this at home, kids. If you don't have the experience working with electricity and batteries and things of that nature, they can be kind of dangerous. Uh, I don't want anybody getting hurt out there. Uh, make sure you, uh, you wear your really cool safety glasses for this sort of thing. Uh, gloves might be in order as well. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you know about these kinds of things. Keep it positive, positive, and negative to negative, and things of that nature, because batteries can be dangerous and explode. All right. So, that being said, I need to fix this thing. Make it work again. I've done two of these so far. They work fine. Hopefully this one does the same. As you can see, the case comes in half and you get your two little locking mechanisms. Just not lose that. And then this whole unit will just come right out of here. And here it is with the uh, circuit board, as I told you. And the batteries, they're wired in series. If you test these individually, I know it's not too easy to see this. Uh, trying not to move the camera around. It's on a tripod. I don't want to screw around with any of that. But I got this on the 10 scale here, so it's straight up. Um, there's my positive. Okay, this is positive here. If I go positive to negative on the battery, you can see it's about one volt in there. I'll switch them around for the next battery. There's an insulator on there one volt. They've all got about one volt in them. And if I test the whole pack, that's the positive side. You can tell by the red wire here. But that's where positive is and this is the negative end. Like I said, they're wired in series. It goes back and forth and you get to the end. If I test the whole pack, oh boy, you get nothing. Oh, no. oh, there we go. I've got uh, about uh, three volts and three volts is not enough you need this uh, if it drops below a certain threshold uh, this board won't make a connection to the battery charger so the solution to this is very simple I made up a couple of leads here with uh, I've got flat uh, spade lug connectors on them they, they do the job for me any sort of a flat connector on your wire will uh, get you where you need to be I'm going to take a, uh, a known good battery that is known good. And my positive and negative here. I'm going to use red for positive. And what I'm going to do is just slide it under here. This is uh, 
it's leeway in here. And boom, if I just slide it under there, I'm making a connection there. I'm going to do the same thing on the negative side since it's a little more difficult. It's not quite the play. But you can get under it. A little effort. Bang, there we go. Those are in there. I don't know if you can see that. I got the spade connector under there. Hopefully I'm doing a good job at the camera there. Now, again, positive, and the battery is clearly marked as positive and negative. And what you want to do is touch positive, touch negative. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1001, should be plenty. It's probably more than enough. And I'm going to test them. And I know this is very difficult to read this meter here. Let's just see if I've got the voltage up on these at all with that little bit of a charge. Bang! You can see it's going right off the meter now. See, it's right up there. So now we got plenty of charge in there. Short term charge. Disconnect everything. Carefully reassemble into the cradle. The housing, whatever you want to call it. These guys are a little bit tricky. I kind of just fold them up in place here. And as we slide this down, we need to get the these middle spring clips. Come up, that one backwards. Trying not to get in the way of the camera here to show you what I'm doing, but it's a bit difficult. So get them in there. Let them slip down to both sides. It should bang together. Put our screws back in. Screw there. How oh, embarrassing. Take your torch, hopefully. Oh, yeah. There you go. Let's put on the spade the other two screws for now, but just to show you. Testing. <laughs> Charging. 30 minutes on there, that battery's back, that, that battery back up to charge, and um, I tested with one of them, took it down, and ran a tool with it, ran it uh, till it ran out of power, put it back in the charger, and it's charging up again, so uh, it's apparently, uh, once it's fixed, you, you appear to be good to go. That's all there is to it. Alright, likes, comments, whatever you want to do, hit me up.